completely not. Some girl I can do. It's like I, I, I said to the Lord, I said, okay, Lord, I get that. But then as I begin to overthink it, it's like um, they heard that for so long, Lord. And I guess the Lord just kind of just kind of ignored me and say, tell my people I'm coming back. So he gave me a couple of scriptures. Um, and I want you guys to go with me to Matthew 24. Laura. But before you, 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 you get ready to before you get ready to read the scriptures, um, there's just so much going on in our country. I mean, I've never seen Israel on the TV and all over the news so much as I just sat and heard lately. Um, and it, it really concerns me. But I'm learning that, uh, you know, that Israel is God's timepiece for prophecy. You know, I'm learning that there's a lot of things that, that as we look at Israel, we can look at what's going to happen in America. And so I'm just kind of like, you know, it's like, Lord, it's, it's, it's a lot going on. And we don't even, we don't get it. We don't understand it. It's, it's, it's like we need to understand the history of Israel to really be able to grasp it and understand it. But a lot of us don't know a lot of the history of Israel. Um, and then sometimes for me, I tend to weep because I sat one Saturday and they, uh, I think they started did like a documentary on, on, on Israel. And it talked about Israel being like the size of New Jersey. And it, it just it just broke it down for me. But it broke it down for me in such a way I was I was able to better understand it. I was able I was able to understand why all of the the uh, things that are going on within Israel. And I'm thinking, Lord, you know, the people out here in the world, they don't get it. They don't understand that. And so they don't know exactly especially on our college campuses about all the different students that's going at Israel. If you sat and you watched that documentary, it would have helped you understood it better. You know, and so my heart is with with, with the land of Israel, with yeah. the people of Israel. Right. Because that is that those are God's people. Yeah. Um chosen people. Yeah. Um Jesus Jewish. You know, so a lot of things have just really brought me to a place of really saying, God, uh, keep me in that place. I'm not, I, don't, I don't fully believe that I'm fully prepared for what is taking place and going to take place in the earth at this, at this, 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 this coming time. And he's just been really letting me know there are some things coming and we're not prepared for it. Uh, one, I mean, even as I was, even as I was, um, even as I was praying, you know, the, the Lord said to me one time and said, my people are not prepared. And when he said that, it kind of, it, it shook me because it's like, okay, God, I'm your people. I, I, I don't know if I'm prepared but I'm in a place within my listening and to find out, God, what do I need to do to get prepared? You know, uh, just so many things have come up in my spirit to make me really pay close attention to, to what's going on in Israel to pay close attention to what's going on in the earth. And then I'm looking at 
the, the election. When you bring up the election, everybody settles for them. You know, everybody gets touchy-feely. Um, but it's like we really, we, we really need to align ourselves with what the Word of God says. Now we, now we cast our vote. That's all, that's all I'm going to say because people get touchy on that stuff. But we really need to align ourselves with what, what the Word of God says. If we are a true Christian, a true believer, we need to be hearing what God says about these different things. So uh, that, those things come to mind for me. When I'm on my knees praying, when I'm talking to the Lord, it's not just a about a one-sided thing. It's about every, everything that the Holy Spirit is bringing forth. And then I look at AI. And that artificial intelligence. But I believe that thing was set up to deceive people. That's cool. I really do. Because I realize there's a thing called, um, I think it's called chat GPT. Well, it's a certain way you can put. Most college students use it when they're writing their papers. That GPT. Most college students use it when they're writing their papers. You, you can you can ask it something and it'll come back with you an answer. Yeah, anything. Write a paper. And I was. When, when one of the students told me about it, I was like, oh, okay. Because when I have to write different things, and I don't really know how to write it, I can put a paragraph in there. And it's finish up the rest. What's your name? Uh, Microsoft. I don't know. So it's John, who's it under? It's just an app. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, as I'm... I'm, I mean, for me, I I, I kind of examine everything. It's like, this is kind of new. Yeah, yeah. And yet, it's me, it's convenient. Yeah, and so what, I, what I'm what i learning with that, with that GPT, everybody's using it. I mean, everybody. I mean, all types of people are using this thing. That thing can, it, it's like... It can call you on the phone. You say hello, and it'll take your voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It'll take your voice. It'll listen to you. It'll take your voice, and then it'll use it to maybe call one of your loved yeah. ones. Uh -huh. Yeah. And have it have you doing things thinking it's one of your children, and it's not. That's true. Yeah. That's true. But this is the world that we're living in. Correct. That this, sounds this like is, movie too. This is the world we're living in. If we don't connect with God the way He wants us to connect Lord, with we, Him, we'll get caught up. Yeah. It does all kinds of things. But it's 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 built to to deceive people. Um so that, that, those are just some of the things that come to mind for me. Um, but if you go to Matthew 24, I promise I won't be long before you today. Because um, it was a book that I was looking for, and I looked for this book all last night. All last night. And I could not find it. And this morning, I got up and walked the dog, and I was in there. I was just, just going to lotion off my feet, and I went to reach for a lotion. <laughs> and I'm thinking, all this time I've been looking for this book. <laughs> but this book goes into detail. It, it, if, any, if you guys are familiar with David Wilkerson, yeah. mm -hmm. a powerful man, God's gone on with the Lord, but a very powerful man. But this man was talking about the things that's going on now, way back in the 80s, 80s, 70s. I started to pull some of his letters out this morning, uh, just for references, and I was I was just amazed at some of the things God had given him revelation about to what's going on in the earth and 
then when I thought about it, I said, Lord, I think my children are pretty much, you know, in a place where they can really hear from you to some degree. But my concern now is my grandchildren. Because the things that's in this earth now are set up to feel these young young come on, baby. Really yeah. feel these young yeah. And I'm just I'm just at a place where I'm believing God that as I pray, as I stand in that gap on behalf of my children and my grandchildren, as mom often tells me so many, 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 many times. He'll say to me, bring it, you kids with God. God will bring the others with you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm believing that for my for my children. I'm believing that for my grandchildren. Because when I look at them, it's like, God, some of them is so far out to the left. And then God reminds me, you was out there in the left, and I brought you in. Mm-hmm. So there's still hope. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> Oh, yeah, Lord, you start with Matthew 24. Mm-hmm. I got to read them. I just pulled out of the book. Go ahead and start with. Um, You can start with me. Uh, Matthew 24, starting at verse 5. For many will come in my name, misusing it and appropriating the strength of the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed, and they will mislead many. You will continually hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened, for those things must take place. But that is not yet the end of the age. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains, of the intolerable anguish, and the time of unprecedented trouble. Then they will hand you over to endure tribulation and will put you to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will be offended and repel by their association with me, and will fall away from the one whom they should trust, and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors, and will hate one another. Many false prophets will appear and mislead many, because lawlessness is increased. The love of most people will grow cold, But the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom, the gospel, will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end of the age will come. So when you're sitting back and you're you're reading and you're looking, I mean, the word of God plain <clears throat> says what we're going to say. We're seeing all this happen right before our eyes. You know, straight out right before our eyes. Uh, and then the other scripture is uh, 1 Thessalonians 5. And sometimes when I, after I've said it, I've read, you know, and then you look at you know, you're looking at what's going on in the earth. It puts you in the mind of like Noah. Mm-hmm. You know, here it is Noah is spending time with the Lord in the secret place. God is telling him what's about to take place. And of course, Noah is getting ready. 
You know, he's he's hearing. He's hearing what the spirit of God is saying. So he's starting to prepare. He's building a boat. Everybody thinks he's done lost his mind. Some straight prayer. You know, but that did not stop Noah. Noah kept right on doing what God told him to do. So and even when as he had built the boat and did everything God told him to do, put his family inside, God shut those doors. God locked those doors. Because, you know, if it was left up to us, we lock the doors and somebody come up and say, hey, you need to get in. We'll open the door and let them in. But God locked those doors. That Noah couldn't open them, you know. So that's, what, this, that's the time that we're living in. God's grace is here. We thank God for His grace. Mm-hmm. But God is, I believe that God is, is at a place of His time with, with what's going on here in the earth. It's like a, a, like a modern day Sodom and Gomorrah here in the earth. Mm-hmm. You know, people are just doing whatever they want to do. You can't tell them nothing, and if you tell them, you got to fight. <laughs> you know, you really got to fight. <laughs> you, 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 you I mean, it's kind of like I'm in this line out here on 84, and I'm waiting because everybody else is waiting. I'm during about maybe 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock track is really, really bad. Yeah. You know, so I'm, I done left here trying to cross over. People won't let you over. You know, it's like you just stay there till the never. Mm-hmm. So, and after I done got over, I'm still standing because there's a lot of cars in front of me. So this person just, just decides, okay, I'm tired of waiting. So they just just got out of the line, got in the middle line, and just used the line to travel all the way where they wanted to go. And I'm thinking, why? People can do whatever they want to do. They make their own laws. It can be a handicap. You parked in a handicap. And... They don't even have a handicap sticker, but they'll park in. Yeah. Or either if the handicap is set up for one car and another car decides, I'm going to park in this handicap, <laughs> you're going to share this handicap with them. <laughs> okay. But that's just the, the just people and the, the lawlessness. You know, you talk to them about truth, that's your truth. Mm. Okay. Huh? Your truth? Right. So I'm, I'm like, I'm just kind of sitting back, and you can't get angry because if you get angry, you worse than they are. That's right. You know. So I mean, it make you make you sit back and observe, and make you look at yourself. It makes you begin to cry out to God. God, make some changes in me, because this ain't good. I'm, I'm, it's just it's one of those things, and I mean, I mean, just one of the things that I see. I'm at a stop. I mean, I'm coming. And this guy is at a stop sign. And the, the tra- traffic is not moving very fast because it's on Memorial. And it's like, now you know you, as you're at the stop sign, you're supposed to stop. But you see me coming, and he's going to take off in front of me. So I, I'm looking at him because finally he realized, I mean, I'm a, you and I can, can collide here. Right. So he decides to, he, he all the way out in the road. Oh, so he finally decided to stop, and I'm looking at him like, <laughs> and he was like, okay, well, what you knew you was wrong up front. Why didn't you just stop? You still had to stop. Sometimes common sense ain't common again. It's got nothing to do with common sense. It's got to do with their impatient spirits. I've seen that a lot in this town. I've seen that a lot. Impatience is not even love, as according to the Bible. It's the opposite of love. People want their own ways, and they're going to push on through whether they hit you or not. Just like they hit me on, on Airport Road. This, this person on an e-bike slammed my head to the ground because they didn't care. They don't care in this town. But it's got to do with impatient spirits. So let's go on over to First right. Thessalonians five. Five 
And then when it was time for me to sit down, and I just uh, grab my word and I do it quick. But it's like, that's not giving God my word. So it's like God is really dealing with our hearts about time for him. He's so busy, busy with this, busy with that. But we need to really make time to spend time in God's Word. Because it's this Word that got to keep us and help us to stay anchored and, and not be deceived. Because when I, when I thought about AI and, and just listening to all the things that it's supposed to be good for, there are some negative things in there. It can be used for bad things. You know, anytime you use it to say, uh, this thing can literally take a boy and have and make you think it's, it's your child. And I, I remember one time, um, I think it was one of them, I had called and, and they kept saying they couldn't hear me. Then they could hear me. And they start, said, stop playing, Mom. Stop playing. Well, I thought about that. That really wasn't me. That was somebody else trying to do something. You know, but just things like that, it, it makes makes me suspicious that it can be used for all kinds of things to deceive, to manipulate, to undermine. Uh, and if we don't get in that place with God, that we are able to hear him tell us that that's not me. You know, and the, and the only way we get to really hear God's voice is really spending time with him, really getting into his word. Because as we do that, you know, he said in his word, his sheep know his voice. Mm -hmm. We get to know his voice so that when Satan comes in, a, in a, a form to try to provoke us with something, we can hear the word of God rise up. And we won't react, you know, but we'll respond by not acting crazy or getting on that level. But if we don't get in that place with God, we won't know. And His Word says we perish for a lack of knowledge. And a lot of us don't have a whole lot of knowledge when it comes to the Word of God. We have them set up under some some teaching to train us to prepare us, to get our hearts ready, because we are in a critical hour, and God is coming back. He really is coming back, y'all. I mean, it may, his word says, you know, we don't know the day, we don't know the hour, but he's coming. Noah didn't know the day, nor the hour, but he prepared. He was ready. So when God Said, I'm, I'm going to cause this flood to come. No one's been around now trying to get a, a, a life jacket or nothing. He already knew. He already thought and prepared. We got to have that frame of mind. We're in this world, but we're not of it. We all going to die one day. As much as we try to put it all, you know, we are going to leave this world. But at least leave this world knowing where we're going to spend eternity. Hallelujah. God didn't. The hell was for, for Satan and his being. Mm -hmm. Yes. It wasn't for us. Amen. But yes. now you can go there. Mm -hmm. He ain't sending you. You send yourself there. Mm -hmm. God has requirements for us. And we have got to come into alignment with what God is saying in this hour. Yes. Yes. I'm nobody, just somebody trying to tell you what God has told me. And when you look around, you you know I'm not lying because you can see the signs of time being played out right in, right before us. I can't tell you enough. God is really, really reaching out to His people in a greater way in this hour to open your eyes, see. As that song says, see what you still can't see. Hear while you can hear. See while you, you have an opportunity to see. Yeah. Because 
You know, it reminds me sometimes when people own their business, they don't they can't see them. But there's things that they want to say. There's last words that they have to say, but they can't even say it. Yeah. And and if, if 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 they could say it, it would be really encouraging to them. But sometimes the devil will let them open and say those last things to them. So in this in this time here, what God is saying is how here by the spirit. Don't listen to the flesh. You feel because you're feeling strange. But hear what God says through his word. Time is short. And when it comes to our kids, we're to pray like we ain't never prayed before. Yes, I look at my grandbabies and my heart goes out to them. Luke. You know, Sarai. Autumn. Especially Autumn. I mean, it's like she graduated. She did. You know, but she, she graduates and she's like, she got a whole world before her. Yeah. But if God don't, go, if God's not intact, in tune and with her, the world, the world will pull away. Especially when you get into that college, I'm that college that. thing. There's so many demons out there. I mean, in the classroom, professors saying this. You, they challenge you when they find out you're a Christian. Yes, the do. freedom that we used to have to, to speak and to move about and talk to people about the Lord, you, it's almost, we've been challenging even in that area. We don't have that freedom to talk to people about the things of God. You know, they're offended when you see mention Christ. You know, and if they sense that you are a Christian, it's like they don't even have you around them. You know? So it's like, God, we we really need help in this house. And some of us want to stay, stay in that place that we want to be a Christian, but we don't want to be an undercover. No, we don't want nobody to know. You know? But don't be ashamed. Yeah. Christ wasn't the same when he got on the cross. So these are things that, that I, when I'm sitting alone, I, I sometimes, you know, I'm at work and I'll go sit outside. I'm I'm thinking about a lot of things. I'm thinking, God, you, you, that's, that's really something has to happen. But only God knows what that something is. And I just pray that we're, we're, we're all in that place that we'll be ready. In that time, I pray that you got something from what God gave me.